Thanks to Backblaze for sponsoring this video. The iPhone 14 Pro has some big secrets. It's packing huge upgrades to the screen, an all new camera, and of course, the dynamic island. But there's a lot that Apple didn't tell you in that nearly two hour event that you need to know. So in this video, let me spill the beans on some of the big iPhone 14 Pro secrets. Oh, sorry, Tim. Let's break down the top 15 or so biggest features you need to know about with the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Is this the best iPhone ever made? Are these some really great upgrades? Or is this just Apple marketing hype and not worth your money at all? Let me tell you everything you need to know. So after months and months of rumors, I'm so happy that the iPhone 14 Pro is finally here, it's real, and it's in my hands for the very first time. And I've gotta say that putting all the leaks and rumors and drama aside, this iPhone is super sleek. Of course, yeah, I would have loved to have seen a bigger redesign and some more exciting colors, but there's something about this iPhone 14 Pro that just feels different. It feels like a new iPhone experience and I couldn't really say that about the 11 or the 12 or the 13. And admittedly, I've only had a little bit of time with this phone so far, so be sure to subscribe to the Apple Circle if you haven't already and stay tuned for a lot of coverage and some upcoming videos. But uh, in this video, I wanna break down some secrets, some things that Apple didn't tell you that you need to know. And let's of course start first with the juicy iPhone drama. For nearly a year, there was so much controversy around this double hole punch cutout that was coming to the iPhone 14 Pro. And obviously, the 14 Pro we have doesn't look anything like this, which has sort of led to a lot of speculation. What happened? Were the leaks wrong? Were they fake? Apple fooled everyone? Well, it's not actually like that. The double hole punch system is here, but it's sort of hiding in plain sight. Not only did Apple post this image on their website and then remove it, and not only did T-Mobile proudly show this double hole punch render of the iPhone 14 Pro on pre-order day, but if you just look at these phones in the right light, you can clearly see that this is in fact two separate cutouts that make up the pill-shaped system thanks to some clever software wizardry filling in that space in the middle. Now, of course, one of the leaks that did come true was the main camera upgrade. Finally, Apple upped the megapixel count from 12 all the way up to 48 megapixels on this main camera. And I was very curious to see what does this actually mean? Are photos going to be noticeably better on the new 14 Pro? Are they gonna blow away every other iPhone on the market? Or like most years, are you not actually gonna be able to notice a difference unless you've got the phones or I guess the photos side by side? Admittedly, I was a little skeptical, so I wanted to put this to the test. And instead of me giving you guys my thoughts, let me let you decide first and foremost. Here are two side-by-side -side photo examples from two different Pro iPhones. One of these is the iPhone 14 Pro, and the other is last year's 13 Pro. Take a moment, pause the video if you need to, do some pixel peeping. Can you tell which one of these is the new 48 megapixel main camera, and which one is last year's model, or do they look basically the same? All right, a couple more seconds, throw your final guesses down below in the comments, and here we go. If you guessed A was the 14 Pro, you would be correct. B is the iPhone 13 Pro from last year. And now that you know which one is which, can you actually tell the difference between the new main camera and the old main camera? It's a similar story here on the video front as well. You can see the 14 Pro versus the 13 Pro here on screen. The videos here are really, really similar. You'd be hard pressed to tell one from the other if they weren't clearly labeled. There are some other camera niceties here, like an upgraded selfie camera. You've got the new action mode for super stable video. You've also got, what is it, uh, cinematic mode at 4K 30. All nice features to see, but really what this comes down to is that the iPhone camera is still really good this year as it was last year. And unless you really know what you're doing and you want to pixel peep or you want as much detail as possible, or you're really going to jump in and shoot raw photos, 
you might not be blown away by the 48 megapixel main camera. If you're just taking photos on your phone for fun or sharing them on social media, you're probably not gonna tell the difference from one or the other. But again, it's really gonna depend on how you're using that camera on your pro iPhone. Another new upgrade that I wanna put to the test on the 14 Pro is the new and improved screen. Right on their website, Apple claims that this screen is two times brighter than older generation pro iPhones. And I not only wanted to put that claim to the test, but let you guys judge for yourself if you can really notice the difference. So here you go. Here's a 13 Pro generation phone versus a 14 Pro side by side in as much direct sunlight as I could get on a Southern California morning. And here you go. You let me know if you can tell the difference one way or the other, if the 14 Pro screen is brighter or if it's not that noticeable. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. The other big upgrade to the screen here is the always on display, which has a couple of cool features and some sort of hidden features that you might not have known about. One is that, of course, it's always on. But there have been some early concerns about battery life that maybe the always on display mode is impacting battery a little bit more than you would have thought and a little bit more than you'd like. But one nice thing here is that if you do just want to turn off this feature, you don't want any impact on battery life and you just want to, you know, not use it because you don't care about it, you can jump into settings and turn the always on display mode totally completely off. But if you do want to use that always on display mode, there are a couple of clever things that it's doing to save battery life when possible. First off, it is smart enough to know where it is. So if it's in a pocket, the always on display mode isn't going to be on and wasting battery. And also if you're wearing an Apple watch paired to your iPhone 14 Pro, it'll know where you are in relation to your phone. So when you leave the room, for example, it's gonna turn the always on display off because no one's really around to see the screen. And speaking of battery life, uh, every single iPhone 14 battery capacity leaked a couple of days ago, and there are some really interesting insights, some upgrades and downgrades to certain iPhone models. Obviously, if you're looking for the biggest actual physical battery, that's gonna be inside the iPhone 14 Plus. On the 14 Pro side, things are a little bit interesting. The 14 Pro, the 6.1 inch model, did get a slightly bigger battery, while the 14 Pro Max, like the rumor suggested, actually got a little bit of a smaller battery with a little bit of a decrease there in capacity compared to last year. All right, now before we continue, let's take a break for just a moment because I wanna tell you guys about a service that I absolutely love, one that you need to know about, and one that is here to save your digital life when you need it most, and that of course is this video's sponsor, Backblaze. Now, if you haven't heard of Backblaze before, let me introduce you to an amazing company that makes backing up all the data on your computer super simple and super easy. They've helped customers restore over 55 billion files, that's billion with a B, and you can get started backing up all your stuff today with just a couple of simple clicks. For just $7 a month, Backblaze is giving you an unlimited backup of every single file on your Mac or PC. Everything's gonna be safely and securely stored on Backblaze servers and can be easily accessed if you need to access those files. You can use the Backblaze app on both iOS or Android, or of course, use the web from anywhere in the world, anytime. And if you want to increase your retention history up to a year, you can do so for just two extra dollars a month. Take it from someone who has learned this lesson the hard way. You want to make sure all the files on your computer are safe, secure, and backed up. And there is no better or easier solution than Backblaze. They make it so simple, so easy. It's $7 a month, no gimmicks, no gotchas. And they've got a free trial for you guys as Apple Circle viewers. So if you hit the link down below or go to backblaze.com slash tech, you can get a 15-day free trial of the service, no credit card required, so you can try it out, play with it for yourself, and really learn the ins and outs and start getting your files all backed up to Backblaze in just a couple simple clicks. Again, learn more, check it out for yourself today. 15 days are free by clicking the link down below or by heading to backblaze.com slash tech. All right, next up, let's finally get into the Dynamic Island and talk about this new feature because there's a lot here you need to know about. One, let's just admit Dynamic Island is a really weird name. I'm not really sure what else they'd call it, but let's just say that's uh, Apple marketing at its finest. Basically, when you're just using your phone like normal, the Dynamic Island is gonna be pretty static. It's gonna look like this little pill-shaped cutout and that will get some getting used to depending on how much you loved or hated the notch. But what makes the Dynamic Island so fun is when it actually gets to be dynamic. So when you have any sort of drop down alert, you usually get on your phone, like you switch your phone into silence mode, you get an incoming call. All of that is actually going to go into the dynamic island and it's going to transform its size and get new characteristics and bounce around uh, depending on whatever alert is coming in into your iPhone. It's sort of hard to describe in words how this works. So just watch the pretty B-roll and you can sort of see for yourselves. Uh, but basically it's this really cool sort of second screen experience on the iPhone in a sense that uh, 
that basically allows you to interact with your iPhone in a whole new way. Any app that supports some of Apple's official APIs should take advantage of this new dynamic island system, so shouldn't be totally useless and sort of locked to only first party Apple apps right out of the box. You're gonna get a different experience depending on the iPhone you have. There is gonna be a little bit of a difference between the 14 Pro Max and the regular 14 Pro. What I mean by that is that because the 14 Pro Max has a physically larger display, the dynamic island is gonna sit further up near the top of the display. And if you're not used to a big screen iPhone experience or you've got smaller hands, you might be having to reach a little bit more and taking more effort to get to the dynamic island to actually interact with it. Now, Apple did say that the true depth system in the 14 Pro was new at the event. And I was sort of curious, is Face ID gonna be any better on this new true depth system than it was before on the 13 Pro? Is it gonna be faster, more responsive? So I put that through to the test in this video. Here's a quick side-by-side -side of unlocking with Face ID on a 13 Pro and a 14 Pro. And uh, as you can see, no discernible difference. Obviously there is no SIM slot on any iPhone 14 model here in the US, though there are a couple of caveats you should be aware of. One is that you can get an iPhone with a SIM slot if you're not in the US, so basically anywhere else internationally. But from what I've been able to discern from information online, while those phones do have a SIM slot and you could in theory import that here into the US, uh, it's not going to support the millimeter wave technology used by carriers for that ultra fast 5G. We should also talk about the A16 processor inside of the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, as with every iPhone every single year, I feel like it's the same story. It's fast, it's efficient, it's powerful, there's no slowdown. There really isn't a whole lot to say which is why Apple probably didn't say much at the event because when you compare sort of benchmarks from the A16 versus the A15, there's not a whole lot here to talk about. Basically from benchmarks, the A16 has a 17% faster-ish CPU and the GPU is about 28% faster if you were wondering. It's also emerged since the event that the iPhone 14 Pro has the new and improved GPS technology that is also in the Apple Watch Ultra. So if you do care about having this new and improved GPS tech, you might wanna pick up a 14 Pro and another tip bit worth noting is that if you do want to record ProRes video on your iPhone 14 Pro, like last year, there is a uh, space limit you have to have that is 256 gigs on your 14 Pro. So if you have 128 like me, no chance, you're out of luck, uh, no ProRes video on your iPhone 14 Pro. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the iPhone 14 Pro? Do you think this is a really big upgrade and Apple should be congratulated for a really you know, stellar upgrade this year? Or do you think it fell short in a couple of big ways? And also, what are your thoughts on sort of the 14 Pro new features? Did you find any tips or tricks? Did you get a phone for yourself and you found some secret feature? And what advice would you give to someone looking to upgrade? Should you upgrade to the 14 Pro? Should you not? If someone had a iPhone 10, for example, is it worth making the move? Let me know your thoughts down below. We can discuss all the new features. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle, and I'll see you all in the next one.